Hello, I'd like to welcome you to uh, this course on mechanical design. Uh, so I'm going to give an introduction on the course contents and uh, what you expect to learn in this uh, particular topic. As the title states, uh, it is uh, titled Mechanical Design 1 because we have two courses. One is Mechanical Design 1 and the other one is Mechanical Design 2. Mechanical Design 1 is an upper division undergraduate course um, also concurrently uh, first year graduate course in uh, basic mechanical design so the course can be taken either by an undergraduate student uh, who is in the senior year and um, he can choose the course as an elective or by a first year graduate student who is specializing in mechanical design and want to pursue a career uh, or parts of his career would require the knowledge on mechanical design. So the course is going to uh, focus on a materials perspective to mechanical design. That is, we want to know uh, what types of materials are used in different uh, mechanical components and uh, what are the limitations on their mechanical behavior um, and what makes them fail and what makes them survive and how to design against failure mechanisms. So in other words, it's a combination of knowledge of how to do stress analysis in, uh, on some components, determine the stress or deformation or deflection or other design limitations that are useful and then use the existing design codes uh, to design against such codes so as i mentioned there are two basic two main courses mechanical design one the final goal is to allow you to design uh, a power transmission system as an example. In other words, you will learn um, design principles, material selection, uh, convenient formulas for stress and strain and deflection, failure mechanisms, failure theory, and then combine all of that in an application that is very important in mechanical engineering and that is uh, in power transmission. Power transmission, we have a source of power, an engine, we couple it to uh, a shaft to transmit this power to another location uh, through mechanisms like uh, gearing, uh, belts, pulleys, flywheels, and so forth. So this entire system has um, elements that need to be understood. Uh, for example, we need to know uh, the maximum stresses, how to design uh, bearings, uh, how to design for deflection, and uh, how to combine bending and torsion and axial loads and so forth. So the final goal, as I mentioned, is to apply in a power transmission system. And as you will learn here, there's going to be uh, two projects. So learning will be through the course lectures that we will give and also through guided projects and the two projects uh, if it is an online version of the course you will not have the hands-on experience to actually machine and assemble your project but you will design it using uh, computer-aided design methods uh, for example you'll use SOLIDWORKS and also you'll use uh, complementary finite element analysis tools, and in this case, we're going to use a console and abacus. The two design projects, one of them is going to be on the design of a gear reducer, um, and that is very common in automotive applications where you have an input RPM that is high, and you want to reduce the uh, speed, the RPM speed, to a lower level through a series of gears and uh, connected with uh, shafts. Uh, that's usually done in the version that we teach at UCLA face-to-face. -face. 
it is also implemented in the machine shop so that uh, you would actually put it together uh, machine the shafts and and then you purchase the bearings and the uh, gears and and then you achieve the objective however in the online version we will not have the machining part this is eliminated and uh, we will just do the solid works and uh, the stress analysis part uh, as we will learn in the course the second project is going to be uh, more advanced on uh, a mechanical design using finite element where we're going to design the connecting rod of an internal combustion engine so it's again related to power transmission but this is a specific component where we go into detail and then uh, develop uh, understanding of the forces on the component the stress distribution uh, since it is going to be operating in a cyclic manner uh, the main focus will be on fatigue and fatigue uh, reliability and also some aspects of fracture mechanics as we would expect the component find the cracks that uh, are there and determine how fast it would grow to a given speci uh, specific design limit uh, so that's kind of the outline for mechanical design one mechanical design two which is uh, purely a uh, graduate class uh, is uh, going to be a sequel of this course for those of you who are interested to become super design engineers really specialize in mechanical design and uh, the emphasis of uh, mechanical design two is on the design of high temperature components so components that are used in um, turbine blades uh, for jet engines, uh, components that are used in heat exchangers, uh, in uh, re-entry vehicles and uh, cooling systems and uh, piping, uh, pressure vessels, pressurized components. So these types of components, they would require understanding of uh, plasticity. So there will be a very healthy dose of understanding plasticity uh, fracture mechanics, damage mechanics, and then combining all of that into uh, applications uh, and uh, compliance with the ASME design code for pipings and pressure vessel and other uh, critical components in the mechanical uh, arena. So that's for the next version of the next level of this course. Now I'm going to walk you through um, the number of chapters that we'll use from a uh, book that is uh, very uh, well known around the world and has been used for nearly 40 years uh, or longer by design engineers and it was originally written by uh, Professor Shigley who passed away and now it is uh, continuing in a new uh, 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 edition so I'll just go through the different chapters uh, to give you an idea about what to expect in the course in this particular lecture that I'm giving right now. Uh, so uh, if you look here, you see that uh, the, this is the, uh, uh, the book, Mechanical uh, Engineering Design, the ninth edition uh, by uh, Shigley. And if you look at the book, the contents start with some conversion factors, uh, and then uh, it has a number of tables and then it has a great number of uh, chapters so let's just see uh, the chapters that we will cover in this course so we'll cover uh, the chapter one the basics of mechanical design load and stress analysis deflection and stiffness and that is beam theory so you've taken some of that already uh, in undergraduate courses, but it will be useful to put it together in a design perspective. And uh, then the second part of the, so this is four chapters, as you can see here. The second part of the course is two chapters on failure prevention. And this is pretty much uh, new material, new territory for you. And uh, that is uh, divided into uh, failure due to static loading and failure due to variable loading uh, such as fatigue and so forth and then the last element of this course is applications so the application that we chose 
is in chapter 7 and the chapter 7 covers the design of shafts and shaft components of course in the book there are many other applications but uh, since you will have the background in part 1 and 2 and an, a very solid example in uh, chapter 7 you will be able to pick any application at any point in time in your career and follow the same procedure so we will focus on shafts and shaft components and then jump uh, to uh, the uh, chapter 18 and chapter 18 will give us a power transmission case study that will be useful in implementing the design project in doing the power transmission case study we're going to have to encounter also some gears and gear ratio so that we can reduce uh, the speed and therefore we will have to go on your own to chapter 13 to uh, learn a little bit about uh, the what you've already or maybe you, you have already known the gear reduction and the gear trains but here is a review so that we can actually use this material uh, in the project so this is kind of the general structure of the uh, of the course and the chapters that will be covered so at the end of the uh, of this book there are going to be some useful tables and the useful tables are in appendix a where you get a lot of the properties of materials that are useful in the design process so let's look now at uh, the what's covered in the part one of the course and part two and then the application part part one is the basics so the basics uh, is uh, going to be defining things like safety product viability uh, stress and strain uh, units and so forth it's very very simple introduction uh, to the course and just orienting your thinking towards what the goal is the power transmission case study uh, chapter two is going to cover material selection and this is going to be very uh, important because uh, you've studied some of that in material science but here you put it all together in defining what are the how do you change the strength of material by cold work how do you measure hardness how do you measure impact what are the temperature effects on properties uh, as a design engineer uh, different uh, manufacturing methods that are related to to the properties the classification of materials uh, steel uh, steel materials other uh, non-ferrous uh, metals uh, that are used in design like aluminum nickel uh, and uh, brass and so forth uh, plastics and composites and then the final goal the final goal here is material selection how do you select a material uh, that is for the optimal for a given design and then uh, ne next chapter is load and stress analysis and that is the usual uh, idea of uh, beam theory and uh, more circle for stress transformations and uh, torsion and uh, bending and pressurized cylinders and rotating discs so it's pretty much uh, a, a comp compendium of formulas that we will use in the design so we're not going to be concerned with um, derivation of the basic uh, solved mechanics equations because that is covered in uh, a previous course and here we will focus on how to use them <clears throat> in the design process especially things like press and shrink fits because uh, these are used in uh, power transmission and then there's uh, one uh, chapter on uh, deflection and stiffness because the stiffness of shafts and uh, their deflection is an important uh, element of the design process another chapter on failure now we go into part two the failure we will learn about stress concentrations failure theories and uh, many different several failure theories that we will cover and uh, then we will uh, end the, the chapter by how to select a failure criterion for a given application 
Uh, next chapter is uh, fatigue because fatigue uh, failure is the uh, most uh, prevalent form of failure. Maybe uh, 70, 80 percent of failures are caused by fatigue. So there's substantial effort in learning fatigue and fatigue analysis uh, of uh, engineering components. Um, and then uh, we move on to part three. At part three, we select only the shafts and shafts components. So shaft materials, layout, shaft design, and critical speeds, and so on. And uh, to make it uh, more practical, we go directly to chapter uh, 18. And chapter 18 is going to be in the power transmission case study. And that will guide pretty much the uh, design uh, project number two on the design of a gear reducer. So we will follow very, very similar uh, steps to what's covered here in uh, chapter 18. So that uh, gives you an idea about uh, the um, uh, contents of the course and what is required. And uh, hopefully you will have a copy of uh, Shigley in your hand. Uh, so that you can uh, follow the lectures and you can go back and look at the details and you will have many, many problems that can be solved and some of the homework assignments will be also assigned from this book. Uh, so in order for you to also uh, uh, provide uh, good uh, design content, you need to learn or be competent in uh, 3D modeling because you will use it in modeling the uh, uh, connecting rod and also in modeling the power transmission uh, shafting system. So what I'd like you to do right away is to polish up on your background in SolidWorks and if you haven't done that there's an easy way maybe it will take you about a week or so to become very good at it so that you can actually apply this uh, knowledge to both uh, projects. So I'm going to show you a site that I use myself to teach myself SolidWorks in case you don't have it. Uh, uh, and then you can actually have a uh, uh, knowledge uh, built up very quickly within one week. So this is uh, something like uh, this. Let me just get to, the, uh, to that site. Uh, this site is called uh, I Get It. So it's my I get it, m y i g e t i t dot com, and it has plans and pricing. So personal business, we go for the basic, which is free. And the basic, you can have a sample course and knowledge based articles, um, and you have the sample courses. Basically, what we need. There's one particular course that goes through the whole process. It has about 90 uh, sessions. Each session is like 10 minutes or so. And uh, once you go through at least maybe 30 or 40 sessions, you will be an expert uh, with SolidWorks and you'll be able to apply it uh, easily uh, to build uh, your project. And with this, uh, I hope that you will enjoy the course and that you will put a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of energy in um, working with me towards becoming uh, a competent and important uh, mechanical designer. So we'll see you uh, in other lectures uh, in, the, in the course. Um, and here I'm, I think I'm going to be able to stop uh, the lectures and uh, see you um, on the next